Welcome back, learners, from the ad break. With me here, I want us to quickly define the cash payments journal. This is a journal in which all cash paid is recorded. So whenever cash is paid, it is recorded in the CPJ. Now, whenever payments are made, it is important that we have source documents. And remember that each transaction that takes place, each transaction that takes place must be recorded on a source document. And this source document must have the following information, the date, it must have the amount, it must also have the name of the person that is involved in the transaction, as well as the reason for the transaction. But let me remind you that source documents are part of internal control for a business. Now, the source document that we are going to be working with when we are going to be doing our CPJ is mostly a bank statement. This is a record of money received and paid, okay? And in most of the times, the business will be using EFTs, remember? Electronic funds transfer. Let's quickly now go and see how we would record in the CPJ. Here with me is the format of the CPJ. So you have your document. Here is the day. The details, it is the name of the person or the company whom the business has paid money. So in the bank column here, you need to record all payments that are made from the business bank account. And in this column, you record when the business has purchased trading stock. Here, when the business has paid for wages. And here, when the business has purchase consumables. And if there is a payment which is not having a column either on the trading stock, the wages or the consumables, then it will come in the sundry accounts. Okay, let's quickly now see if I have a transaction, how would I record it? With me here, dear learners, is a transaction which reads, M. Rajesh bought a delivery vehicle from Clutch Motors and made an EFT payment of 120000 So the document is going to be EFT. The date, remember, it is the 5th. The details from where did we buy this? It's Clutch Motors. How much did we pay for the vehicle? 120000 Remember, it is not consumables. It is not wages. So I'll bring it now to my sundry accounts, One twenty. And then I have my delivery vehicle. Okay? Now, it is very important that you don't record amounts in the wrong columns. You need to know which columns. Let's do another activity and see. It reads as follows. Paid rent of the premises to next rentals with EFT number 1, 7,500. That means, yeah, EFT 1. The date, it is the third. Whom did we pay? Next rentals, as you can see here. Next rentals. And then how much did we pay? 7,500. It's not for consumables, no wages. So it comes to the sundry accounts, rent expense. The next one, paid wages to the workers and we paid 12,000. So it is EFT2. The date is the fifth. I'm going to say cash here. And then on the bank, how much am I putting? How much did I pay? 12000 And then that 12000 is for wages. Let's go to the 12th one. It says, paid the telephone account to Telcom with EFT number 3 and then 2700 So on your document, you are covered already. Remember the date. It is the 12th. Whom did we pay? We paid Telcom. So we come here. It's Telcom. And then how much was that? 2700 it is not consumables, neither is it wages. So it comes to the last column, sundry accounts, telephone. The last one says, bought hair shampoo for blue hair traders for 1250 and we used EFT. EFT4, the date is the 24th. Whom did we pay? Blue hair traders. And then we paid 1250 This is for consumables. So you can then add, and then that is how you get your 
23,450 and your 1,250 as well as the 12,000. Not to forget your sundry accounts with 10,200. Now, it is very important, dear learners, that you understand how to post this to the general ledger, okay? So we're gonna quickly now go and post this to the general ledger. When we're posting to the general ledger, we need to know the dead click. What it means is we debit all our expenses, that is the E, we debit our assets as well, that is the A, and we debit drawings as well, that is the D. <clears throat> and then we credit our liabilities, that is the L, and then we also credit income and capital. Let's go and apply this when we are posting. Here we have our CPJ already completed. So we are now going to post, okay? The first one we're going to post to is into the bank account. So remember we are paying. A bank account, it's a plus and here is a minus. So 23,450, we will now post it into the bank account, all right? You will see here, it comes to your bank account and there it is, 23,000. 450. The next one is going to come to the consumables. As you see, here is the 1,250. It comes to your consumables over here. And then the next one becomes your wages, which is coming to your wages account. Remember, this is an expense account. Hence, we are debiting it. And then I want us now to remember the double entry principle. That is, for every debit, there has to be a corresponding credit. Let us now continue posting to the rest of the accounts. What I have now is my rent expense. As you can see, rent expense is an expense, as you can see from its name. So on the debit side, it increases. Hence, you see, I have debited bank 7,500. As well as my telephone, I'm also going to debit it as you can see over here. Now, dear learners, it is very important that you remember, okay, the double entry principle. For every debit, there has to be a corresponding credit entry, okay? Now, when we go to the trial balance, we use again the same principle of the dead click, all right? Let's see. When we are posting to the trial balance, you will see here we have two sections of the trial balance. That is your balance sheet account section and your nominal account section. Let's start with the nominal account section. What we have here is consumables. Let's see how we would post that. There it is. It will come here. There you have your 1,250. We post the wages. There is your 12,000. We we'll also post the rent expense and then you have your 7,500. And the telephone, here is the 2,700. Now, remember that the amounts that appear on the credit side in the general ledger must still be posted to the credit side. And those that are on the debit side in the general ledger will appear on the debit in the trial balance. Okay. Now, when we come to the accounting equation, it is very important that you remember that your assets are equal to owner's equity is equal, sorry, your assets are equal to owner's equity plus liabilities, all right? So remember that you debit your assets and your expenses and you credit your liabilities and your income. Dear learners, we're going to quickly go for an ad break and I'm going to see you in a short while.